this is going to be another look at the high-level play that the Ravens are getting out of Geno Stone, uh, what some people would have described as a, as a backup safety at the beginning of the year, certainly with, with Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams being the starters on Sunday against the Titans. Williams suffered another injury on the first interception that I'm going to show you. And then Hamilton was ejected, so Stone is kind of thrust in there again. And it, at this point, they should just pencil him in there, or maybe they should not start him each week and just let him come in on the second play. This is a guy who's playing at an incredible level, giving us turnovers. I did a film study of him after the Bengals win in week two, and I will show some of those plays here. Everything hasn't been perfect. There's been a couple times where he's been beat on third down where he's asked to cover people. And man, I don't think that's necessarily his strength, but he's a guy who's multiple, playing as a deep middle of the field safety, playing as a half field safety. An amazing play by him, if you ask me, on the interception on the ball intended for Oconquo. Let's get to the film quick. You guys let me know what you think of Geno Stone uh, before the film and then during the film as we premiere this. So this is Geno Stone. It's 18-13. Titans have the ball just past midfield. We go down and get a field goal after this interception. I think this is a cover three to the to the trip side, and I think it's man to the backside, to the downside. I'll show it again. At least one more time over. Check out the two veterans here, Van Noy and Clowney. They're like, okay, bring this, bring this all the way back over here. We are ready to set up a wall and and take you to the to the promised land. In this case, Stone cuts it back inside. Watch, look at these two guys kind of I think they kind of glance at each other as if like, what's he doing? <laughs> because they've been there before, they've seen it. But hey, he's getting interceptions. I got no complaints. So I think what you end up with is man here by Stevens and man here with uh, Marcus Williams on the backside of this, and then a zone to the front side. Marlon ends up uh, identifying the vertical a little bit late and turning and going. You can see his turn is just a little bit late. You got Hopkins over here, and then Henry releasing out into the flat, so he's got a lot in front of him. Stone had taken the middle of the field in between the hashes. Tannehill thinks he can throw it over Marlon's head. Well, he could. Marlon wasn't able to recover, but Geno Stone was. Brilliant timing. Great hands by Stone. He's he's shown this multiple times. I remember his first career interception against the Steelers, a ball that Ben Roethlisberger kind of threw up the right-hand side while there was pressure in the pocket in 2021, I think, in Baltimore. Uh, he's been clutch for us. I hate to keep using that word. I did a video about Lamar Jackson's clutch play on the 10th possession, but I don't know how else you describe some of the things he's done and, and when and where he's done them. Think back to Sunday, and I'll show you that play again against the Titans. Again, we're up 18-13. After being up 18-3 to three at the half, and the Titans are threatening to turn it into another nightmare scenario where we give up a lead and, and give away a win, essentially. This is a cool concept by the uh, Bengals, if you ask me. They're getting one safety, in this case Hamilton, out of the way, occupying him with Boyd. And then Higgins is working over the top of Roquan. Burrow kind of stares him down and... You'll see it from the end zone angle here in a moment. And Geno Stone's just playing him. Were they to go backside to uh, chase against Brandon Stevens? It looked like he had lost him. But part of the idea of playing multiple coverages and having guys like Hamilton, Williams, and Stone on the team is that you can present different looks to the quarterback. That's what the Titans did to Lamar on Sunday. That's what the Bengals have done to Lamar historically. And I thought Lamar handled it really well against the Titans on the play Sunday where Geno Stone got the pick against Tannehill. Tannehill and the, and the Titans didn't handle it well. I don't, I don't know anyone who would have predicted this from Geno Stone so far. I think this one's kind of a gimme against the Browns in uh, week four. Week five, excuse me. Thrown over the top. It's manned by us. Really a, a gift. But the point of having Stone on the, on the field, one of the things that he offers is the ability to do multiple things. He can play some man to the boundary against specific players. I don't think McDonald is asking him to play nickel hardly at all, and I think that's a good decision. If you have Williams, Stone, and Hamilton out there, to me it seems obvious, play Hamilton at the nickel. He's the best of those three at it, number one. Number two, those other two guys are really good at playing the high safety. Again, back to the Bengals game in week two. And this is going to be a screen to chase up to the boundary. This is a beautiful play. Queen finishes it off. Queen redirects on this play. Like Queen is coming on a blitz and then sees the ball thrown and redirects back out here. But look at Stone's angle, his commitment and understanding to use his teammates as leverage, takes on Chase on the inside. Queen shows up, finishes him off. It goes down as a one-yard gain. A brilliant play by a guy who, like I said earlier, people would identify it as a, as a backup safety for us against one of the premier offensive talents in the league in Jamar Chase. We're getting 
an extraordinary amount of performance out of this guy. I don't see any reason why he can't do these things consistently. This one goes down as a tackle for him. I think he's using the sideline as a defender against Mixon. It's man to the boundary. Very similar to what I showed you with Marcus Williams and Brandon Stevens on the interception against the Titans. It's three receivers to the top side, man here, and then man there if he releases to that side. I want, I'm guessing if he released to that side, then Stone would probably help out with Chase. As it stands, Burrow on the snag flat concept gets it out there quick to Mixon. And again, I think Stone is using the sideline as a defender there, and that's why he's taking on the inside leverage. Does get credit for a tackle. Brilliant play from week two against the Bengals. It's going to be kind of a double slant from the top side on, I think, a second and long. Up ends, Boyd, huge hit. This is an aggressive guy. He comes down. At times, I have worried about him getting hurt because he comes downhill so violently. He's so committed to coming after people um, in the run game or like plays like this in the pass game. Geno Stone is giving us everything that we would have wanted from Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton, but we're getting it out of uh, extremely low salary. It hasn't all been perfect. Clearly, he's going to be man on Njoku on this third down, and he slips, falls down, gets beat over the middle. I think Roquan drifts too far uh, to the side where the quarterback initially looks and kind of just leaves that space available. I don't think that's his strength. This one I don't really put on him in terms of blame. Burrow motions the tight end twice on this third and one, and then basically it's a, it's a pick concept to the field where they're using the receiver up there to screen or force Stone to go underneath, and you can see Burrow's already throwing the ball. Stone's got to go kind of underneath this guy. Ends up being a three-yard gain for a first down. Stone does make the tackle, however. I'm not sure what the athletic profile listed him as when he came out in the draft. I know he went undrafted. But he's more athletic than he's probably given credit for, or at least what people would describe. So again, we'll go back to this one from week six Sunday. Man here, man here. You got both backs are going to release out and get involved in the routes. And I think Marlin identifies the, the vertical by Oconquo, a University of Maryland product, by the way. I think he identifies that a little bit late because he's focused on Hopkins and then Henry. It's a pick concept by Hopkins up there. It's basically screening off a man to allow Henry to get open in the flats. I think Kurt Water identified it well that uh, there's probably available for Tannehill to pick up the first down if he throws it out there to Henry. His choice was to go up top. I think our coverage is our ability to be multiple. I think you've got um, cover three allotment there. I think Marlon is a little late identifying this vertical, and you've got Geno Stone in the middle of the field. Some people call it match three, whatever you want to call it. We're, re we're pattern reading out of what looks like a cover three. And Geno Stone is a guy that right now is making plays on the ball. How many interceptions do you think he ends up with? I mean, at this rate, we're six games in. He's got three. Tannehill, I think, is staring this one down a little bit. And with Stone so far, it seems like if you're going to look in the area and then throw in that area, he's going to show up. He's going to be there. So I think he does a great job of staying on his leverage if he's in the middle of the field or half field safety. And then I showed you some examples of him playing well to the boundary in man situations. Now, this is a beautiful moment, if you ask me. Because at that point in the game, our offense had stunk for three possessions in a row. Geno Stone was able to get the initiative back in our favor. Again, we get the football back with an 18-13 lead. 4.30, 4.20 left in the third quarter. The offense is able to bridge the third and fourth quarter, get a field goal to put us up 21-13, up by eight. Huge moment. Then we go down and get another field goal in the fourth quarter to you know really close things out. I know we had to recover an onside kick, but man, Geno Stone is just one of a number of great stories for this team so far this year. I did a video on Justin Matabike late Monday night. If you want to check that out, I'll link it up here at the end. Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Van Noy. I didn't mean to do so much defensive coverage um, this early in the week, but it seems like that there's so many guys playing well. When I started to watch the film late Monday night and early Monday morning, these are the things that just stuck out to me. I threw some plays in from Stone from earlier in the season just to show the complete nature of how he's impacting the game and what he's offering the Ravens so far. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know if you agree with me about the, the high-level play that he's given us beyond just the interceptions.
and if you're as surprised that we're getting the uh, the turnover production out of him such that we are. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this video, this film study look at Geno Stone, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.